Welcome to the video lecture series on research methods and analysis by data and research. In this video, we will learn the process of developing a research proposal in humanities and social science research. We all know research is a kind of investigation and that is the thrill of it. And the reason behind any investigation is the existence of a problem. In research, the problem does not mean an issue. Instead, it is something to solve. It is just like a problem in math. However, it can be an issue also. Usually, scholars who begin to do research used to get confused about identifying a problem. There is no need for much confusion. Just look into our life or our neighbor's life or our friends or our surroundings. We can see a lot of problems around. Imagine that I am a scholar who is planning to do research. The problem I identified is postpartum depression. If I were three decades before today, I would have noted my idea on a piece of paper. But now in this digital world, I am just typing it in a word file. Next, I have to get some information about the, this topic. If I were a scholar five to six decades before, I would have visited different libraries in different universities and colleges to do initial learning or review of available information or literature about postpartum depression. Now it is very easy for me. No need to move from my seat. I have search engines. So, I will enter the keywords postpartum depression in the search engine. While observing my search results, I understand that the information I am receiving is extremely general. These are blogs. If I need only to understand about postpartum depression, these blogs will be a great help. But now, I am in the process of an investigation. I am 007 or I am Sherlock Holmes. I want information with pieces of evidences because I am going to explore for a reason. So I am adding a new keyword to the search bar. Journal. Now. I get information about postpartum depression published in scientific journals. Great! I went through these files one after another. It took a lot of time. We can call this as an initial survey of literature. A research scholar can investigate a problem in two ways. One, to study more about a problem. Here we are looking at the past. Two, to find a solution to solve the problem. In this second type, we are planning for the future. I understand that the literature has a lot of evidence about the problem. So, Based on the initial survey of literature, I decided to work on a solution to this problem. Again, I went to the search engine, entered the keywords, postpartum depression, solutions, journal. I need to be a little bit selective now. Evidence-based information is mixed up with blogs and newsletters. 
I patiently selected evidence-based information only. From the literature, I understood that there are solutions for depression. More are medical solutions. Why are there no psychotherapeutic solutions? I thought I would search for the interventions for postpartum depression. There are some therapeutic interventions available. But almost all the interventions are problem focused. Why can't there be a solution focused intervention? I have read a lot about solution focused grief therapy. Why can't I check if there are any SFBT interventions for postpartum depression? By the time I have reached such a question, it might have taken one or two weeks of intensive search. So please don't fall into the illusion that such an insight into the research problem will arrive in a day or two. After achieving this insight, I decided to search about it. I found one manuscript in the same area and not more than one is available. I felt I had understood everything about the identified problem. So I shall fix a tentative title Solution focused brief therapy for postpartum depression. In reality, this feeling may not be accurate. It is the scholar's confidence, not the actual reality we trust here. Now, I have to create a brief background of my research. This background will later be the introduction to my research proposal. For that, I have to search more about solution focused brief therapy, the independent variable, and postpartum depression, the dependent variable. For that, I created some keywords. One keyword is postpartum depression itself. I thought I would start with my dependent variable. I searched for maximum information about postpartum depression and started writing about it. Wonderful! One paragraph over about the necessary information about postpartum depression. It took about three to four hours to come up with this one paragraph. Please don't be under the illusion that you can do it in five to ten minutes. Because when we place statements, we need to add pieces of evidences with them. We will supply pieces of evidence through citations. Statements without pieces of evidence are not considered scientific arguments. They are just opinions. There is no need for a scientific investigator to just present opinions. Anybody can do it. But evidence-based arguments can only be developed by a good scientific investigator. Another keyword I supplied was solution-focused brief therapy. However, there are no huge pieces of evidence that SFBT is a good intervention strategy for postpartum depression. But I understood SFBT is good to enhance positive effect and reduce negative effect in an individual. From the reviews, I understood that positive effect could contribute to the upward spirals of happiness. This will prevent the individual from digging into the downward spirals of depression. I also understood that positive effect could broaden the thought action repertoire and thereby enhance the resilience of the individual. Based on this, I added my second variable to my research. Resilience. Great. It is time to modify the title of my research. We may have a trial and error situation while fixing the title. For instance, I initially thought that I would make a title like Postpartum Depression and Resilience the effect of solution-focused brief therapy. 
Later, I felt it is not okay. So I changed the title to the effect of solution focused brief therapy on postpartum depression and resilience. We may do this exercise a lot. We can modify the title until we submit our proposal to the ethical committee or institutional review board. Next, I have to write about something really, really wonderful. I used to call it the rationale of the research. Others may call it the need for the study or the significance of the study. Some scholars used to say need, significance and rationale are different. In my opinion, you have to know that opinion and not an argument. That's it. In my opinion, rationale and need and significance of the study are same. So in the proposal, I used to present only the rationale. In the rationale, I used to write in detail, why am I doing this research? What is the novelty in this research? How is this research adding to the current literature, discipline, society and so on? The objectives of my study are strongly linked with my rationale. And the whole research is strongly linked with the objectives. If there are no objectives, no research. I will add the rationale now. While writing it, I have to find the links to this. Why, what and how. From the background I have already prepared. And wow, here the rationale is done. No, 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 we cannot do like that. We may take a day or two or a week to do like that. I want to wind up this video at a specific time. So it happened in three minutes. So please do not misunderstand that the process can happen so fast. Next, we have to develop our objectives. The objectives are closely linked with the rationale. So here my objectives are 1. To understand the effect of solution focused brief therapy on postpartum depression. 2. To understand the effect of solution focused brief therapy on resilience among the postpartum mothers. 3. To study the relationship between resilience and postpartum depression before and after the solution focused brief therapy intervention period. These objectives will help us to reach our aim or to solve our problem. Whether solution focused brief therapy is effective in enhancing resilience and overcoming postpartum depression. While seeing the objectives, we can understand what the research questions are. Instead of objectives, we can present the research questions also. In this study, I can express the research questions like this. Does SFBD have a significant effect on postpartum depression? Does SFBT have a significant effect on resilience among postpartum mothers? Is there a significant relationship between resilience and postpartum depression before and after the solution focused brief therapy intervention period? These questions can be solved using hypothesis testing. So I can develop the hypothesis like null hypothesis 1. SFBT does not have an effect on postpartum depression. Null hypothesis 2. SFBT does not have an effect on resilience of the postpartum mothers. Null hypothesis 3. There is no significant relationship between resilience and postpartum depression before and after the SFBT intervention period. To test these hypotheses, we need quantified data. Before moving to methods, we have to briefly present the studies we use to develop the background or introduction and rationale and objectives. For that, we need a new section in the research proposal. We will call this section review of literature. We can briefly write about not more than 
8 to 10 closely related studies in review of literature section. These studies are to show how we decided to look into the problem which we already discussed well in the introduction section or background section. There are different ways we can prepare reviews. Chronologically, alphabetically, thematically and so on. In my observation, the thematic presentation of the review of literature is suitable for a reader to understand the theoretical framework of research easily. After the review, we can directly move to the method section. We can start the method by explaining the design. So the first side heading in my method section is the design. In the present study, I plan to follow the design randomized control trials. So I have to write about the design here. To know more about randomized control trials, please watch the video lecture on experimental designs by DNR. Now I have to write about my sample. What is its size? From where I can select the sample? What is the age range? Are there any inclusion or exclusion criteria? Next, I can write about the procedure. By procedure, we mean the data collection procedure. Here we need a detailed description of the way we are going to collect data. How we are planning to approach the participants. How we are planning to maintain our ethical concerns how we are going to introduce research to the participants, how we are randomly assigning the participants, where is the venue of the study, how is the clinical trial going to happen and so on. For instance, the present research is done among postpartum depression patients. So I need an assistance of clinical psychologist. I have to mention that, etc, etc. After the procedure, we may discuss a little about our variables. Here we can explain each variable. However, I have not done so. If you are interested in defining your variables, you can do so immediately after the procedure. Now we know the sample, we know the procedure. Next we have to introduce the measures. In the present research, I may be using a tool to measure postpartum depression and resilience. I have to provide information about the validity and reliability of each of the scales specifically. Next, we can tell about the operational definition. If you are doing qualitative research, operational definitions are not that important. But in quantitative research, operational definitions are inevitable. Through operational definitions, we are defining our variables in measurable terms. Here, resilience is operationally defined as the score received by the participant on the resilience scale. Why? What is the importance of such a definition? Through this definition, we are informing the scientific world that we will call a score received from this scale as resilience. So, resilience in this research is just based on the dimensions of this particular scale. This is important because there may be another scale of resilience with another dimensions. Variables in social sciences are like that. We were not able to find out the complete dimensions of any of the constructs in social sciences. We are working with available dimensions. So it is important that we have to inform this through a technique called operational definitions. After the operational definition, we can present our analysis. The proposal I have developed is for quantitative research. Hence, I am discussing quantitative analysis here. Those who are doing qualitative research can discuss the qualitative analysis here. Actually, here ends the proposal. Some of the scholars used to discuss the expected results after the analysis section. I am not discussing it here. 
as it is not a necessary component of a proposal. If the funding agency has criteria that the scholar should show the expected results, we have to add it without fail. After the method, we may show the references for all the studies we used in this proposal to support our arguments. Finally, we have to include appendices where we add our timeline, budget and an explanation about our measures or intervention schedule. Now that's it. These are the major components we need to add to a proposal. I hope you enjoyed this presentation about the steps in developing a research proposal. If you have any questions, suggestions or recommendations, please don't hesitate to write to dnr365 at gmail.com.